Hi everyone, thank you all so much for coming out tonight to check out the World Premiere Sanctuary. Um, we're quite thrilled to be premiering here at TIFF. Uh, and I want to take this opportunity on behalf of the uh, filmmaker, all the filmmakers, the cast and crew, to thank uh, Cameron Bailey, uh, Jane Schodel, Robin Citizen, and everyone at TIFF for giving us this wonderful platform on which to premiere the film. Thank you. This is a culmination of a lot of hard work that a lot of people um, really put everything into. Uh, Margaret and Chris, it was an amazing thing to watch. They really gave everything they absolutely had um, into their performances in this film. So I hope you enjoy it, and I'm very excited to speak with you about it afterwards at the Q&A. Thank you very much. Do scenes and blocking and all that sort of stuff. So can you talk a little bit about what that process is like? 
Was it coming from you? Was it coming from Zach? What was your working with? Well, um, I'm usually on the trip, and it's super fast, it's like a ride and set, but it's two people in the room. So I was like, okay, how are we going to do this? And then I was like, 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 and then I
Uh, I was wondering that a little bit on my first side, but I'm also a film person, right? So I thought maybe I'm just reading into that. Was there any of that in the story at all, or is that just us projecting out? You know, first of all, I thought I heard her name at first. Well, it was her Chris. I don't know. It's not a different question. So, yeah, you know, actually, it's funny. So, I was on the phone with um, Margaret just yesterday. We were just like, kind of catching up with the thematic business of the film. And I was talking about how it's interesting that this is a story about two characters who are very much confined by the rules and the rituals that they undergo in this space. But within that confinement, they find a lot of liberation, right? It's like your role is to be the submissive one, my role is to be the dominant one. And it's okay for you to be that way, and it's okay for me to be this way, and that's all you have to be, and that's all I have to be. And there's a kind of like release, a letting go, when someone is told, you just have to do this, that's it, I'm just going to do that. And so I was saying it to Margaret, and Margaret was like, well that's a little bit like what it felt like to act in this movie. <laughs> because, you know, with the walking was exceptionally specific, because um, we made the film in, in 18 days, um, so we had to kind of like go through it. Um, quite quickly. Um, uh, so the blocking was quite specific and the shot was all visualized. So that was all sort of discussed um, and worked out in advance. And so anyway, Margaret was saying that it kind of gave, gave her, as an actress, uh, the opportunity to feel somewhat liberated because, you know, you go here on this line, you turn on that line, and then when that's all worked out, you're able to sort of like release or liberate yourself within those top lines. So I, I think you're right uh, you talk a little bit about the gender dynamics, but obviously gender is a big part of what's going on here. And um, when you're writing the script, are you thinking about the comedy of it? Right. I mean, I think, yeah, I just, each person is trying to, like, when they are going through the power, is trying to, like, use all of the tools at their disposal to give them the power, and then Chris and Margaret just took it and, to, like, the end degree, and I think, um, all that stuff is just like in the mix, like as we're making this. And, I, and I, for, for me personally, it's like, I don't think we have like a particular axe to grind about like with the messages and like that. It's just like, what's the most interesting in your team? Like, scary, weird, funny thing that could happen. And yeah, when I was just watching it just now, I was thinking about this thing, I was like, there's, I think what we were actually going to do is just like put as many different emotions and colors and like experiences into each moment as possible. And so, if it's like, if it comes out funny, if they like Chris and Murray did stuff that was not supposed to be scary, it was supposed to be funny, but it comes out scary here, and there was stuff that we thought we could have, you know, like, like oh, that would be like scary, and Chris said it's funny, but I think the way that Zach and, and, and everyone at the crew is like putting it together, it's just, it was like all the emotions that should happen to each thing. I guess that's what I was trying to do that, but yeah, yeah. Okay, we have time for one more great question. Yes, go ahead. What inspired the look and feel of the hotel in terms of production? Yes, so the idea for the hotel room, there were two key things. One was that um, because the, basically the entire film was going to be set in this hotel room, it had to be relatively aesthetically busy. Um, it couldn't be, you know, there's a lot of like, contemporary hotel rooms where there's not a lot going on in terms of the interior design scheme. And if the hotel room looked like that, it would have gotten like, tedious your eye after a certain period of time. So there had to be, um, the wallpaper had to be busy to a certain degree, right? The carpet had to have a pattern. There had to be enough like aesthetic business going on there to keep you constantly stimulated with what you're seeing. Um, and then the other idea was to have it feel, I didn't want it to feel like a kind of super sexy, super contemporary hotel room where you might expect um, a rendezvous like this to occur. There was something interesting about it, feeling a touch quainter than that, um, just a touch, um, to sort of increase the tension with regards to the fact that this meeting is happening in a hotel room that's a bit different from where you might expect it to happen. Right. Can I have one more question? Yes, yes. I think there's something about how many like, I really see like modern and just like white and bland yes. that I think like plays on what Chris mentioned, the fact that like, these, like you're constantly seeing two people playing roles and they keep shifting and switching roles but you never know uh, at what point they're like playing with each other, playing with the audience or actually being truthful and what being truthful even means. And I think like the environment of that, like else. Right. 
Well, I, I also wanted to ask you just to wrap up about the lighting um, in here. You know, it, it, it looks and feels very simple. There's a lot of practical, it looks like. Can you talk a little bit about what the challenges were there? I think the main thing was like making it believable, but also like lighting for the emotion. And like, there's a moment like, when one of the tests where like, they have it two different color space and, and they're like opposite, but in a way that they're kind of each other's world. And, and the lighting of each other, so when I flew, but there's just things up red and vice versa. And it's just like, um, you know, making sure that the lighting also modulates throughout and changes as their relationship is changing. So, sure, make it believable, but like adding, you know, things here and there, color, that like just amplify their emotional journey, because that's what it's about. It's not like, oh, this is the hotel, it really looks that way. It's like, okay, what is the turmoil that's going inside them? Let's hear it one more time for Sam Hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.